like it. I like that we haven't really done like a big like whenever I'm thinking of us designing games around this, I'm always thinking of a bunch of pasty dudes sitting around a table sweating all over the place. I just gave you a quick you description. Like yes, just like right now. <laughs> um, to the Idiots 3 RPG podcast. My name is Duncan and I will be your judge, your host, and indeed your masseuse of the mind for this evening. Gross. Um, tonight we're playing a spaghetti western themed pitch slap, hence my, my believable and not at all offensive accent and all future accents that are about to follow. <laughs> Uh, Pitch Lap is the competitive RPG development show where my two fellow cowboys pitch an RPG concept and then have a showdown at high noon. Mm. Just keeping it thematic, you know how it is. So, who are these so-called boys of cow? Well, if you could please introduce yourselves and maybe tell us your favourite Western movie. Well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and now the other half I don't really, I don't up. really know how Western accents go. Uh, I'm Jack. Uh, otherwise known as a host of experience, but I would also do this sometimes. Uh, and my favorite Western movie is Blazing Saddles. Ooh, fun. Uh, Jack and loses points for plugging his other show in the show. I'd also <laughs> like to say that people often say yee-haw, but how often do they say haw ye? <laughs> <laughs> terrible, already terrible. Uh, I am AJ, I'm on no other shows, and my favorite Western is The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Nice. So uh, let me tell you how the game works because I assume between recording the previous episode and this one you've forgotten. Uh, you fellas are going to pitch me an RPG concept. We're going to discuss the mechanics, maybe try it on for size. At least I hope we'll try it on for size. And uh, I'm going to award you points for design, novelty, funness, and my special category, which is speed of play. Mm. So the, uh, the faster your game is to either get into or the faster it is to play or both, the, uh, the more points I'm going to award you. Tonight also has the bonus theme. This is our first bonus theme that we've done of a Spaghetti Western. Um, yee-haw. Yee-haw indeed. Haw a ye. So the more spaghetti that your game is, the, uh, the more <laughs> bonus points you're liable to get at the end. There's three bonus points up for grabs and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see how much spaghetti is involved. Lovely, lovely. Uh, what if we're sh- gluten intolerant? You just I you, don't know, you gluten-free, can get spaghetti. gluten-free spaghetti. Yeah, gluten-free spaghetti. But it's not really spaghetti, then, is it? Well, now you're getting to the a philosophical Jack, Jack, conundrum. Jack hitting the brakes on this podcast. For I'm some sorry, reason. guys. <laughs> I just want to. I just want. There are celiacs these out the, there, guys. They the, might be listening, and they will enjoy the representation. Virtue okay? signaling issues. the celiacs. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, I want to be on go- the. I want to be on the right side of history, guys. Uh, Duncan, <laughs> so, who goes roll, first? Can we roll for initiative, please? Yeah. Uh, Jack goes first because he got the dice faster. Don't roll. Jack's first. Ooh, oh, that's twist. a good one. Yeah, plot twist. Oh, yes. Thematic. Oh, so. hold on. What did you just do, Jack? I just dabbed. Very nice. Duncan, can you look under the table? There should be a note taped just under the table. Oh. It, there, is, there is a note under the table. <laughs> what? <laughs> There's seriously, right now I'm struggling to un... What tape did you use? What confounded cement, sir? I cannot pick it off the table! C- could you read the note aloud? I shall read this note aloud. Between the hours of 12 and 2pm on the 14th of March, mm-hmm. Jack will perform a dab. Signed, AJ Macruso Esquire. Uh, I was so close. No, it's 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 ten to three. Ah, uh, I tried. I was close. Uh, I well, bonus points, uh, really, for the uh, psychic predictions. Dab, <laughs> the dab crew wins again. Yeah, so you get a point for being psychic, but you lose a point for not being accurately psychic. Enough psychic. Yeah, uh, psychic enough. Uh, Jack, okay, I'm very I'm... sorry. On, on the All first. right, let's go. Let's do the thing. Okay, well, howdy there, partners. It's time for some shootout, because that is the name of the game. It is shootout, the 
spaghetti western based around is a competitive game for three or more players. Uh, I say it would cap out at about six, but I haven't play tested it with more than that, or really at all, so I don't know if it will work. So, here's how it works. It's called It's Advanced Rock, Paper, Scissors with a Western theme. Ooh. Each player gets three cards, which you can look at. There you go. And would AJ or Duncan, would you mind reading out what each of those three cards sure. re- say? I have three cards. One of them says, Shoot! There's exclamation points. Yes. The and other it. says, Cover! Yes. And the final one says, Rush! So shoot, cover, and rush. The basic rules are this. Each player, at the same time, plays the card of their choice. Mm-hmm. Right? And declares, with a finger gun, who they are applying that action to. Mm-hmm. Shoot beats rush. Rush beats cover. And cover beats shoot. I like this. That actually works. Yeah. So um, w- once that so once that happens and everything's concluded, so for example, let's just quickly play around. Sure. Tight. Uh, everyone holds up their card like this, oh. face towards them. Mm-hmm. And once everyone's done, just pick one. And what you have your other other hand ready with a finger gun. Okay. Right? And you play. Play. Okay. Oh, we've got a Mexican, Ooh, Mexican standoff here. So, oh. right. I'm pointing oh. to you. Yeah. Jack, you're pointing to AJ. And AJ's pointing to me. Everyone rushed. We all rushed. So that means everyone takes damage. So the game, well, it is a speed of play game. Yeah, so. so everyone takes damage. You have X amount of health. I haven't decided. Maybe like three. Okay. So you have three health. And once, it, once you've gone down to zero, you're knocked out. Cool. Okay. Okay. So, for example, just put down shoot. Uh, put down shoot. Cover. I put down cover. Okay, I'm opting to shoot Duncan. I'm opting to cover in his so just shitting face. Just point. Cover point. Jack. No, cover AJ. Cover AJ. So, in that case, shoot doesn't beat cover, mm. and you take damage. You lose I damage. what I like to call gumption. <laughs> because if you shoot at someone and you miss, you're like, oh hell, you've lost some gumption. If you oh, get shot, tarnation. you're like, oh, what tarnation? You just gotta walk on by without saying howdy, like. You take damage. You take gumption damage. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, in the case of, let's say, uh, Duncan was shooting me, and I shot at AJ, and AJ was covering at Duncan, it gets complicated. Um, <laughs> yeah. Duncan would deal damage to me, I would deal damage to you, and you, but you would deal damage to Dun- Duncan. When two opposing people come up against each other, so shoot and cover, that's when the kind of hand, pa- hand rock, paper, scissors comes so into play. He, so by covering at me... I lose damage. So AJ takes cover from me, and you, I lose. You took cover, Yeah, but you were covering from me. Oh, excuse me, sorry. So you're, I thought... you're applying the action to whomever I'm you fire you. the gun at. I misunderstood. That is literally how it works, and you just go, okay, right, cool, damage done, and then you pick up your card again, and okay. you just keep going like that until everyone except one is knocked out. I'm a little confused, but I think yeah. that's because it's so simple, I'm trying to overthink it. Yeah. It, it just kind of happens, doesn't it? Yeah, it just Sweet. happens. Um... Tell us more. Tell us more. Now, here is the role-playing aspect. Because you each get characters. You could just play it like that, and that's it. But... Well, th- this is just multiplayer paper, scissors, rock. Yeah. With, with a skin, which is fine. But, yeah. yeah. Here is the role-playing element. You are the gunslinger. Ooh. Duncan is the sheriff. Yeah, boy. And I am the outlaw. Okay, so gunslinger. Each shoot deals two damage. Yeah. Interesting. So if you manage to shoot Duncan, instead of taking one gumption damage, you take two gumption damage. So you might choose to cover from him a lot more often than from other players. Right, because strategically speaking, Mm. he's a greater risk. I am a sheriff and thus have extra health. Additional health. So he has five gumption instead. So I... I, Okay, yep. yep. Meanwhile, I'm an outlaw, which allows me to... uh, My shoot can fire through cover, but only once per game. Hmm. I should make that clear is that each of these because the games are so quick you right. literally finish them in about five minutes you can only do them once per game and the way you apply them is that you play that card at the same time you play your shoot card shoot card for me and you just have it it's just passive I have extra you just have additional all the health. time yeah I'm and these are not balanced boy. in any way by the way so that might be really good and that might be really bad and this might be absolute horseshit okay, and play testing you'll figure it out yeah if that's the game OP. Okay. That shootout. I mean, it's hard to come up with lots of in-depth, niggly little questions like normal because it's just so fucking simple. Mm-hmm. Um, 
It definitely fits our spaghetti western theme, which is great, and it's certainly oh, yeah, a three-way shootout. Is I think oh, I love it. Yeah. If if you had to, if you ask someone to describe a spaghetti western scene, it will be a three-man standoff. It'd be exactly what we just did. Where That's I'm the pointing image. at Jack, Jack's pointing at you, and you're pointing at me. If we yeah. had two guns, we'd do it both ways. Yeah. Um, That's so, a player ability, by the way. And two guns. Like, there are other ones where you can do it at the same time. You can fire at two people or cover from two this, people. This um, this mechanic is very similar actually to your Fortnite one from the previous episode from a month ago as yes uh, from a month ago a month ago not an hour ago mm. one uh, month one whole previously. month yeah it's de- definitely not like we've read out something that dates this episode immediately <laughs> <laughs> so um shit I can't remember where well I was shit that. well shit you're, you're saying it's similar to I'm, I'm saying it, I've got some similar nits to pick mm-hmm with uh, with shooter as I as as we did with with uh, uh, fork knife mm-hmm. in that so uh, the role playing aspect is se- very secondary. Yeah, it is. Um, is there a way we could dis- like? Is there a way that this could fit into some kind of narrative or something more like bigger in character? Yeah, sure. What I what I would actually do is do something like uh, do you guys know cash and guns? Mm-mm. I'm aware of those two things separately. Similar thing to this. Uh, you point foam guns at people and that sort of indicates what you're going to do to them. I won't get into the rules. It's a fun game. Um, but you could just straight up play this with like nerf guns or something. Mm-hmm. But maybe you have three different things on the table and you literally have to quick draw them off the table or something like that. That would be quite good. Yeah, I think like props, taking this into the real world could be quite fun. And then if you beat someone, you get to shoot them in the face with a nerf. <laughs> nerf darts. Yeah, that could work. Yeah, and it, I mean, that, that's what that's my immediate here's, instinct. Here's something. So I sort of something I was thinking whilst whilst you were talking and whilst I wasn't listening, um, uh-huh. is uh, here's you could take this. You know, did you, have you ever played Wink Murder where you're wandering around instead of just standing in a circle? Oh, yep, yep. Where you so like so when I was a kid, we used to play Wink Murder at my my aunt's house, and we all the kids we'd wander around the land. It was a big big field. And if you were the murderer, you would wink at someone, and they mm-hmm. would have to die. And dying would be very a very loud affair. Mm-hmm. And they would, and then there's, there'd be a, a detective would come in and, and have to try and figure out who it was. Is wink murder like mafia style game, but moving about. So you, you'd yeah. hear someone yell, you'd run over. I mean, this would kind of work in a similar moving about, wandering context. Instead of winking at someone, if you encounter someone, you go into like a standoff, and then the kind of like maybe kind of three or four or whatever you pull out your card and it's like cover or rush interestingly that's a bonus rule not the wandering around bit but the draw as a bonus rule Uh it's like uh whenever somebody there's no like official turns or anything like that or rounds you just do this or you do like a predetermined thing like thumb on the table or something like that Mm -hmm. and then you like look the person in your eye that you're going to deal the action to and the last person to draw Lose forfeits their turn, something mm. along those lines. So there is a little bit of that in what you're describing. Yeah, because yeah. I just I'm thinking with, with the Nerf guns and Duncan's idea, this is very much turning into LARPing. Well, oh, that's God. still this is all this, this Oh God, we're, we're Western LARPing. <laughs> <laughs> Western LARPing. Well, it works. You bring bring your Nerf guns and other symbols, some kind of way to symbolize cover or rush. Maybe you just freaking rush at someone. I don't know. <laughs> just punch them. You, <laughs> you just clock them in the jaw and be like, ha ha. You lose gumption, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you. It it actually would be quite a fun game if you're if you're wandering about a house or a property or a forest or wherever you you lock eyes with someone. You you know the rules. You got to freeze mm-hmm. and do the whole fingers waggling next to your your nerf gun, and then you either are gonna shoot them with your nerf gun, rush, or take cover. You could just have a handkerchief that's a different color for each thing. Could it, I, I reckon let's really lean into the LARPing for a second. Yeah. Okay. Let's okay. say you're playing it on your mate's farm and you're doing something there, you come across another player or two players or whatever. You could have you could either go for the nerf gun, so that's shoot, cover, you just ju- drop to the ground, and then rush, you run at the other person. Mm. So like paper, scissors, rock, those are actual gestures. You could you could take these cards and make them into actual actions. Actual actions. Yeah. yeah. And here's the thing, if you LARPify this game, which actually no, normally I very rarely get into a conversation where the outcome is let's go fucking LARP. Uh, I think but, we should change it to yee <laughs> <laughs> 
it's, it's how it, horrifying it's actually horrifying. No, it instead cut. of law <laughs> it's it's like l-a-y-w law and it's live action yeehaw law of fine <laughs> oh actually no oh. shit oh god it, the game is shootout if it's a live action shootout it's a lasso which oh, is oh which yes is lasso, lasso. That's the new name. Lasso. That's the new name. So, oh, that's so good. So we're playing Lasso. You could actually still have character elements. I don't mm-hmm. know if the stats would necessarily work as much unless you had costumes that denoted your status. Um, like maybe if you had the sheriff's badge, you you yeah, know you've got yeah, yeah, definitely. Or something. So, um, but yeah, you bring the characters in. You've got to act as your character. Maybe that gives your character an objective. So the mechanic, the core mechanic of dealing with other players remains the same. Perhaps you layer on story of based objectives mm-hmm. if i'm the sheriff my obvious let's say everyone is in the same outfit you don't actually know who's who except the sheriff who's got the badge the sheriff's goal would be to figure out perhaps who the outlaw is and the outlaw is i don't know maybe to rob someone or rob as many other players or something like that. the gunslinger might be trying to get a bounty on on the sheriff or on the outlaw or something like that and then suddenly you've got story dynamics as well and you're not just hunting yeah you can also from- something like um particular characters are meant to like avoid harming particular other characters yes. like maybe you're meant to take the outlaw alive or so the sheriff like might, that. Not wanna, might not be able to initiate combat with the gunslinger so even mm. if I want to try and shoot you I can't because you're the gunslinger I have to walk past could be uh, it sounds like a bit of Banes and Boons sort of action going <laughs> on <there. laughs> Banes and Boons <sighs> yes but for the same reason we added these secret objectives to Banes and Boons it kind of works here as well it gives your character your reason for existing within the game and doing actions purpose now porpoise query is that quick that say play that <laughs> Is that is that fast play? Is that quick play? Yeah, that's still quick play. Is it? The, well, it's quick to get into the game. Might the game round would take longer? Yeah, it'd take a long time. My, the spe- the Lopping specific- takes like a weekend. Yeah, the specifications that I was, that, that I it. gave you were a game that's either quick to start mm. or quick to play, and this okay. is still very quick to start. Everyone yeah, sure. can learn the rules. With like the snap that. of a finger. Yeah, and things like objectives and things like that. You'd have them preset, you can just deal them out to people mm-hmm. pretty quickly. Or well, not preset, but you just quickly de- deal them yeah. out to people. I mean, I like it. I like that we haven't really done like a big like whenever I'm thinking of us designing games around this, I'm always thinking of a bunch of pasty dudes sitting around a table sweating all over the place. I just gave you a quick you description. Like yes, just like right now. <laughs> um and, and and not really doing anything, but I do actually quite like the idea of this being something that you can get up and do. And but this and but the rules are still simple enough that you can explain it quickly and just immediately it get means, into it. it. It makes it, in my opinion, a good family game. I don't know if mm. you're gonna excuse me. I don't know if you're gonna have hardcore role players who will probably pick this up when they could pick up D and D and all that sort of shit but look if you're at a family barbecue and you need the the kids to be occupied for a while or shit if you just want to be if you just want to have fun yourself you've had a couple of drinks or maybe you want to do something with the kids you give everyone their three items or their three rules or whatever it is that signifies your card you give everyone their character you all go off to different parts of the property and then you wander about Mm. I mean that's Mm. that's that could be like a fun little time filler while someone's cooking on the barbecue we're describing Westworld we just made Westworld the game. It is, yeah, it is a bit like that. You're mm. right. Let's put that on the box because that'll sell it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no trademark uh, problems here. It's uh, Eastworld. Eastworld. But then, Eastworld. Then that's the right that exists. Part of the world. That already exists. That's West... a Japanese one. Oh. It's that Samurai World, isn't it? West Planet. West Planet. But now I'm just immediately thinking of Pizza Planet for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this seems good. I'm just trying to get my head around how we put more story and things into it well like, it, like like just we just you have adventure modules you just say okay the the uh the uh dramatis personae for this particular module is the sheriff the gunslinger the uh, bank robber and the bounty hunter here are their objectives here are their abilities here's the story behind it and here's how this can conclude so you just have an introduction to the players and say oh, well how did they folks yeah you're going to be playing the gunslinger today your aim is to kill everybody like yeah you could really lean into the LARP aspect yeah. and put a story to it and then just use the base shootout mechanic as the mechanic mm. and also ask play- like people who are going to be 
there are going to be casual players, like we said, where you just round the Barbie, or um, you're going to have people who are really into it. The people who are really into it are going to be role playing regardless. If you yeah. if you say this is a game where you get to play a role, I like that you have like the family barbecue, and then you've got you know your kids and all their cousins round, and you tell them, okay, so uh, the living room is the saloon, that yeah. shack over there, that's. The farm. This is the prairie. This is the main street where your showdown's gonna happen, and the kids can just go role play whatever they're doing in the areas. And then when mm-hmm. they bump into each other, then you then the game starts. Well, the combat starts. Yeah, I, I think we're getting somewhere. It, it seems good. like we like it as a LARP idea. Okay. Do you reckon it could work as a tabletop thing? Like, how would you do the story? Because the problem with competitive things is, you know, you either have to take people into different rooms and then bring them into the room when they meet with the other players. How would you do it? Let's say not it's a to have a narrative. Round. Not to have a narrative. And to be honest, like I didn't design this to be suitable for a narrative. I did think, mm. like, do I want a story? But when I thought quick play, I was thinking, like, I wasn't thinking easy to explain. I was thinking it takes five minutes to mm. play a game. Mm. And in that, it's very easy to understand. But you also need to play it real goddamn quick. Mm-hmm. Um, so I didn't really think of a way to put narrative into that because how would you for a game that's five minutes long? You're a cowboy. Why you shoot people? <laughs> why would you bother with narrative and characters and all that sort of thing for a role playing podcast? I mean, I, I mean, just don't get why you would bother. Why would you? Why would you make the requirements? You know, quick play for a genre that is notoriously long term. It's the query. You, we got it. We, these are the questions I, that we ask. It on does this seem podcast. very quick. And like, if you're doing a LARP thing, the game will drag out a bit. Yeah, but still, this mechanic is very quick. Yes. Yeah. In, it, it is, is more of a mechanic than a game that's nice it seems great well I have no further questions for fast not fast play shootout can, shoot I, out. can I can I quickly mention some of the bonus rules I came up yeah. sure give us some bonus so rules. with draw at the start of every turn the players have to hold up their cards and meet the eye of whomever that like each player um, and any player can then begin the draw which involves them slapping their card down and shooting with and shooting with the finger gun as normal, but the last person to do so loses their turn. Um, there's also posse fight, which is yes, <laughs> posse, big wet posse fight. Um, so rather than <laughs> big hairy hills posse fight, uh, there's <laughs> so rather than individual characters, the players get access to a posse. So a group, <laughs> I'm sorry. a group. Shut for fuck. Can you, <laughs> you bro? Yes. Gang fights. Rather than individual characters, the players get access to a gang, a group of characters from the above, which is the various different characters uh-huh. like the sheriff, the outlaw, etc. Each member of which has vastly lowered health. Um, so only one member of the gang is played at the time. So once they're defeated, the next gang member is played. This continues until the gang is defeated. So you might have a sheriff, a gunslinger, and a brave in your party. And the abilities of each of those people can only be played until that person is is defeated and the next person comes on. So it vary, it varies the game a little bit. Mm, and yeah. lastly, very similarly, bet- it's called Spin the Chamber. Uh, between rounds, each player draws a random ability card um, up to a total of three. Okay. So bang, you lose. Everyone draws a random ability card. So I might get Fire Through Cover, but I also might get... Uh, Whatever that one reads, I can't read it. Each but. shot deals two damage. So yeah, I might get shoot through the cover, and my thing does extra damage. I can only use one of those abilities at a time, but I can I have access to them. Interesting. Mm. Cool. Yeah, that's it. Shit is done. This shit is done. Sweet. Is that it? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's it. it. <laughs> well, let's go to commercial. Uh, may I say it for my episode, please? Any time is a good time for broiling thick, juicy steaks indoors or out. What kind of steaks? Tenderloin, porterhouse, T-bone, sirloin, or rib steaks. They're all naturally tender and excellent for broiling in the top USDA quality grades, prime, choice, and good. Prime is the top grade, and choice is almost as high in quality. For more information, write How to Buy Meat, Agriculture Radio, Washington, 20250. And we're back from commercial. (laughs) Uh, Duncan, thoughts on the commercial break and our wise, wise sponsors? You know, I thought it wasn't the best work. You know, it wasn't the best work. I've, I've heard better meat and... Oh, uh, it was, sorry. I meant it was their best work. I've never seen better. And um, I love my family. So, um, meat aside, 
Let's continue with the show. Tuck that meat away. <laughs> AJ, walk us through your game. Alrighty. Uh, I can walk you through, or we can move through at a fast pace, seeing as this is fast play. The game. Well, if you would like to earn points. Alrighty, I'd like to earn points. Uh, my game is called The Good, The Bad, and The Chaotic Neutral. Alright. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a reference, man. Uh, Alright, you play as members of a, a gang running 49% of crime in the town of Turdbox, New Mexico. Uh, your missions are classic western missions uh, stealing from the rival gang infiltrating their events rustling cattle as well as the reverse pre- protecting your shit from your rivals and the law etc uh, also bank jobs train heists uh, buried treasure in a grave somebody has poisoned the water hole there we go first, Usual sort of things. first woody reference yeah <laughs> I'm surprised it's taken us this long to get to a woody to reference to get a woody yeah mm. <laughs> you can get a pill for that when you said when you said when you said rustling cattle and the opposite, in my head I was like, "What cattle Plain rustling ca- you?" <laughs> <laughs> Being I went, rustled by cattle. I went, I went cattling rust like cattling Russell instead Russell, of rustling cattle. Russell didn't like it. It's like, what the fuck does that mean? Uh, so, how is this fast play? That's your setting. Uh, the fast play everyone comes in with a timer. You have a limited amount of time to make decisions, mm. uh, especially in combat. So, when you arrive at a round of combat. Uh, this requires a GM for storytelling and running the combat. Sure. Uh, the GM will lay down your situation, start a timer, you've got 10 seconds, what are you going to do? Because uh, I see it a lot in RPG games that people will... I'm an uh, I'm going to uh, look yeah. at their stats, think about what they're doing, which I think takes away from the role-playing element of it, because then you're just trying to sort of game your stats to figure out what mechanically is your best thing to do. Instead of just being in the character and saying, okay, my character does this because... That's what they would do. Sure. So, take it, forcing you to take it down to a more instinctual level. Okay, so for all intents and purposes, it plays out like a typical RPG with the narrated GM being like, here's what's around you, what you see, smell, hear. Uh, yeah. And now a mon- uh, not a monster, now a, a bandit is, a monstrous bandit is coming after you. A punk bear. Go. Yeah, and then you've got 10 seconds to make your quick decisions. I think 10 seconds sounds like too much time, if I'm honest. I mean, we'll see what it's like when a round... You have a bandit through. coming at you. I Ten. should. Well, oh. you, you could... All, you, could <laughs> you could vary the amount of time based on the scenario, but what I want to mm. do is basically get your decisions as close to real time or more likely bullet time as you could. So everything sort of goes into slow motion, like... Um, the Matrix. Yeah, like The Matrix. Stuff like that. And <laughs> you have to make decisions very quickly. The, there's a timer still happening. It's not mm. like time is frozen, like usually happens in turn-based con- combat. Everything's slowed down. You've got 10 seconds. If you don't do something in that 10 seconds, the GM takes a hard move against you, or you just miss your turn, basically. So that, okay. that, that's the main way I'm wanting to make a fast play. And I think it fit into Spaghetti Western quite well, because if you watch Spaghetti Western films, there's... Um, quite a bit of setting up uh, the scene and quite slow paced tension building up to a moment and then you get to the showdown and everything happens in four seconds mm. and then bang 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 and then you're done so I wanted to sort of replicate that kind of feeling so you, you can hang out and wallow in the feeling of the world but then when you get to fast play everything happens real real quickly and gets I resolved. don't want to meet your mom. I just want bang, bang, bang. Oh, is that why you were smiling? Yeah. I thought I thought you were smiling because he said that there's a long, slow build up to just four seconds of action. Oh no, and that, that was, that was, was, what, that was, was I was. Smiling. No, no, no. Mine was far. Mine was far more infantile than that. <laughs> mine was a callback to early internet. So yeah, that that is the key way I wanted to make it fast play is uh, build up the tension. Quick showdown. Okay. The other way I wanted to speed up play is I took a look at D&D and I thought about how can we make uh, this dice mechanic make it faster. And I thought the number of dice D&D has and the number of stats kind of bogs it down because that's why you have to pause. As you go through all your stats and you figure out what dice you need, you do that, then you do some maths, then you resolve it. So my idea was to take it down to one die. Everything's D10 based and your enemies and sort of your challenges don't have stats. Only the players do. And then whatever your enemies do they're rolling against your stats basically so instead of having to you know roll ac for various different players and for the enemy you just do it based on whatever your character has so there's no working out so when you have to make a quick decision you make it roll the die and then you've immediately got your answer of what happens in combat and then you have to resolve it okay can you walk us through a scene 
and yeah. and like and bring, start to bring in some stats and characters. Well, to, oh, oh, I'll give you the stats I figured out. Um, what I have. So there are six stats. We've got marksmanship, mm. which is your root toot shooting ability. Um, Why is it not called root and toot and shooting ability? I don't know because I'm a boring man. <laughs> okay, so you got root tooty shooty. Mm. Well, it's because you can also have knife throwing. So that's not. Well, I guess that's root. And I wish to root. Maybe a little bit. I wish to toot. <laughs> Uh, so you got marksmanship. I thought you could like choose a speciality. So my speciality is handgun. So, you're, so, you, <laughs> so your speciality is either rooting or tooting, <laughs> <laughs> or in this case shooting. So your speciality is handguns. You can have advantage on those rolls. Okay. So instead of rolling one d ten, you roll two. You you pick whichever one's higher. Sure. Quick maths. Um, or Quick maths. if you're throwing a knife, you still have a you can still have a high marksmanship score, but you're less experienced with knives. So you roll two, you pick whichever one's lower. Right. And, uh, yep, then you got strength, which is hand-to-hand. Your yeet, if you want. Marksmanship will be your That's not very spaghetti western. Hmm? Yeet isn't very spaghetti western. Yeet-haw. Yeet-haw! There we go. (laughs) So yeah, hand-to-hand, strength. You get punch-ups and spaghetti westerns all the time, Mm -hmm. where you have to brute force your way through things. Uh, Reflexes, which I thought will come quite nicely into... Uh, the amount of time you get like you could have your reflex of stat which would be out of nine and then you have 10 seconds or five seconds plus that that amount of your stat in, in seconds so you get a bonus depending on what your reflex score is uh, what else perception how much you notice about things uh, charisma which is sort of bluffing seducing those kind of things so perception will come into poker as well like you want to get a read on the person on the other side of the table what am I getting from them uh, <laughs> and then Horsemanship was my other one. Cause I, lo- I like riding horses like Red did and things like that. I want to have that as a stat. So the stats are all out of nine and you get... You, easy way of divvying it up. You get 30 points at the beginning, put them wherever you want, and then you've got your character. Or, or you have your... You can have some archetypes like the gunslinger, the muscle, the face, things like that, where you form different parts of the gang. Because one thing about Spaghetti Westerns is if you look at the heroes or the main characters in it, mm-hmm. they're all incredibly good at gunslinging and that's kind of their own thing but in an rpg especially one that's multiplayer you want more balance throughout the team so that's kind of why i made it a gang it's well, more like you're it's more yeah. like you're the opposition in a spaghetti well you need team. you need the de- demolitions expert you need the physician um you need the gunslinger of course there's always got to be a sniper you need some there's... goddamn faith yeah that was a red dead redemption reference uh right to aj mcfarland for the explanation of that joke if you don't get it continue duncan I mean, I was more or less done, but oh. Chaplin could be one of the 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 roles. You got to go to Tahiti. There we go. I'm done. Uh, so th- the way your stats work is you roll to do something. You've got a limited amount of time to roll to do something, and if you if you're deciding what to do, you can sort of ask the GM questions. And so for instance, oh, I want to shoot this guy in the face, and then the GM will tell you how difficult it is, but they don't give you a number. They just give you you know an indication. This will be very difficult or easy. So if they're 10 feet away versus if they're 50 feet away, 10 feet away will be an easy roll. So they just say easy. And then if they're 50 feet away, you say that's very difficult or like miraculous. You need the best score you can possibly get, which I want to bring the idea of like responding in words very quickly rather than like a particular role you needed. Because that's saying character, it's staying in world. So instead right. of saying, oh, you'll need a 16 because you have to calculate that very quickly, just say uh, medium. And then mm. if, if you're not good at shooting, you can go, okay, medium, that's very iffy. I'm going to run over and take cover instead. Is there, a point at which, like is there a point at which someone would say, or the GM would say, that you're not going to be able to do that no matter how high you score? So, for example, I want to shoot that guy 300 yards away with my pistol. Yeah, so uh, the, way, the way we're shooting would work. You've got your stat out of nine, and then you roll a d10, you add them together. So it's pretty much always going to be mm-hmm. single digits. Those are easy and quick to and together if something's impossible you say it's a 20 and you can't get that with even a max score of 9 and a 10 you can't get it so you make it miraculous so for a miraculous one I was thinking you could uh, build up luck so if you fail on Uh, a roll for something you get luck and then you roll two d10s instead of a single one so you can still mess up on that because you could just roll two ones snake eyes yeah Yeah, snake eyes snake eyes or you could get a 20 and you achieve no matter what you're doing if you watch spaghetti westerns they constantly make absolutely impossible shots mm. like shooting the noose off someone from 
three hundred yards away. Yeah, shooting which, a bullet that ricochets off a tin can that bounces off this over here and still somehow gets him between the eyes. Yeah, so you still need the opportunity for shots like that. Yeah, which is why you hand out things like luck, so you can do something miraculous all of a sudden. But you don't you don't want people to do it all the time. You're yes. not the man with no name. You can't you, if you if you give players that power all the time, then you know. They just breeze so, through the game. You need adversity. And so, struggle. Um, was luck a stat? How is luck accrued and used? Uh, I was thinking every time you either get hurt or every time you fail a roll, you just get given a luck token. Okay. And then, uh, you know, w- when you're deciding what to do in your 10 seconds, you say, I'm going to use my luck and give yourself a bonus on this roll, basically. I see. So failing, you, it's almost like a second attempt kind of token. Yeah. Second chance. Okay. So yeah, if you attempt to shoot something but you don't have a very good shoot score mm. and you fail, you get luck, you can do something miraculous later on. You get a chance to, you know... At the end of the make film, the person everyone thought would be useless somehow makes the shot. Exactly. I like it. That's the one. Very cinematic. Mm. I love it when a game is cinematic. Yeah. So using dice as simplified as possible, making it D10s, nice small numbers, and then the timer is the other thing that makes it nice and quick. So that's how the game works interesting yeah so could we is it possible do you have enough written down is is there anything preset that we could maybe just do a little scene and feel the pressure of your it's mechanic? funny you should ask that duncan i was waiting for you to ask cool let's run through a scenario Uh-oh. i've got some i've got some characters here for you yeah um, can we have a character voice well how to do my name is daryl and i'm <laughs> from uh, that's not important. <laughs> uh, tell me a little bit about your character. Well, I'll tell you a little bit. Oh, it's, I should have read this before I did this voice. I might have changed my accent because it's not appropriate anymore. But I'll tell you it anyway. I'm the face of this operation. I don't know how I qualified. Gift to the gab, even if no one wants to hear my voice. Uh, run me through, run me through your stats. What, what are your higher stats? Well, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm also the muscle, apparently. So I'm the face and the muscle, and I'm excellent at poker, and lucky with the ladies. Not good, just lucky. <laughs> um, I'm particularly good at... I really wish I read this before I did the action, because it is not appropriate for my character trope. I am very strong and very charismatic. I got eight strands, almost full strength. I'm like a muscle-bound giant. Not that you could tell from my slightly high-pitched, eccentric boy. Yeah, man, you, you work out. The ladies like that. It makes you <clears throat> intimidating to others. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's your skills. Also, uh, you fucked up with one of the ladies earlier. You get some luck. Oh, yeah. Congrats. I'm lucky with the ladies. That's what our mama always uh, told J- me. Jack, what's your character's name? Name's Pete. Uh, explain a bit more sure. about your character. I'm silent and deadly. Like a fart. <laughs> I'm the one you paint a target on. I'll get him from across the land. Mm. So I'm the- real good at shooting. Not so good at the tooting. <laughs> What's the tootin'? It's, I'm sure it- Charisma. <laughs> <laughs> My reflexes ain't half bad. Yeah, silent and deadly isn't good at the tootin'. I ain't exactly the strongest fella that you're ever gonna meet. But everything else, I'm pretty much average. Sweet. Let me set the scenario. All right, uh, with your horses by your side, Daryl and Pete wander into the town of Rock Ridge ahead of their fellow gang members in search of a game of poker in order to secure funds for whiskey and beds. Uh, Sadly, just before this, you were attacked by bandits uh, who made off with the majority of your funds and shot Pete in the butt, hence walking (laughs) instead of riding, and hence why you have your luck token. Oh, get shot in the butt. (laughs) Won't be the last time. Uh, you find yourself outside the Rockridge Saloon and hitch your ponies next to a pile of broken wood, which in a previous life had an illustrious career as a table. You wander into the saloon via its large corner door entrance. It is a large square room, 50 feet in width and length, with the bar to your right as you come in. There are tables around the edge of the saloon where people seem to be minding their business, with lively piano music bouncing from a plump man at the opposite end of the room to the bar. There is also a large table in the middle of the room, which looks to be comprised of loose pieces of wood stacked on four barrels. What do you guys do? Well, I'm the face of this operation. I say what goes. You know what I say? Let's have a game of poker. I couldn't understand a word you just said. Sit your ass down, but oh, maybe you kneel your do ass that. down. That's but a little bit of a fresh wound, literally. I tell you what, this wound of yours is a pain in the ass. So sit your ass down. Uh, I'm putting you on a, ti- uh, a timer. Where are you actually going to go? I go to I go to the bar and be like, 
You're going to the bar? Yeah, I'll go to the bar. Howdy, friend. What can I get you? Howdy, sir. We're just, see, fine, fine, honest traveling folk being in a bit of a scuffle, can't you see? My friend here, can't you see? Been shot in his ass, can't you see? <laughs> no problem, friend. Plenty of standing room at the bar. Lovely. We's just wondering if there's a poker game in these towns. We might be able to fend out some of our, our lost resources, you might say. Well, our previous table came to a terrible end, just not the other day. Uh, but I can point you towards the table at the center is our temporary poker table. Before you all wander in, we have a house policy, no, no guns, so if you could hand them over, I'll hang them b behind the bar where you can see them. I lick my lips and I, do I have only one gun or do I have hidden weapons? Uh, you've got one gun. Damn. You, you, you've got what, a rifle? Uh, yes. Big rifle, hard to hide. You've got a pair of pistols. Pair? Yeah, two. I hand over my rifle. Cool. Uh, Jack, Pete, what are you doing? Uh, I'll hand over mine as well. Oh, good. We're all being friends here. Like I said, we's just honest folk traveling. Thank just you, come sirs. From a scuffle. Thank you, sirs. Uh, Can't you see? <laughs> help, help, sir. Help yourself to the table in the center. If oh. you'd like to stand at the bar, feel free. Where does he put the guns? Uh, they're right behind the bar. You can see them. Uh, they're right next to us. So you might call them easily accessible. Very easily accessible. Okay. Uh, what are you both going to do? Start with Jack. Uh, I'm just going to stand at the bar and wait for the poker game. So you're going to order a drink or uh, whiskey? The harshest one you have under the bar. There you go, partner. <laughs> Slide your whiskey. I'm so cool. Uh, Duncan, 10 seconds. Uh, I go to the poker table and have a seat. Is there anyone else there? Mm-hmm. Uh, you see two other men at the poker table. As you sit down at the table, uh, you slightly depress the planks on your side. They raise up on the other where a surly gentleman is sitting and knock over a glass of whiskey. You spilled my drink. Well, I ever so apologize, Sabah. Ain't this table just the darndest thing you ever seen? Uh, the stranger scowls. He doesn't seem to like your charms in any way at all. There is a third man at the table. He jumps in and says, Now, now, Joe, let's be friendly to the stranger. Uh, uh, hi, stranger. Now, uh, uh, I see we've got on a small scuffle here, but how about we try and make amends? Uh, uh, how about for this next <laughs> It's a, it's a fucking sheep, isn't it? It's uh, a sheep, I check. I check to see if it's a fucking sheep. Perception, perception roll, perception check. Just a d10? Yeah. And then add your perception to it. One. He's got... It appears to be a sheep. Wow, it did take a lot of perceiving. Well, it is not a sheep. It uh, takes all it takes all sorts, I guess. Uh, all right, Joel, uh, if we're all born with friends, uh, how about Stranger? You uh, you put up Joel's ante for the next round. Can everyone be amenable to that, Joel? Well... Are you Annie is two dollars. You have five dollars. Oh, so I'd have to put in two times. Ten two seconds. Dollars. Well, seems how I reckon this is a honest tavern for honest folk, and I done here spilled your whiskey. I reckon I'll put up your ante, but don't expect any kind of raisin from me. This is just the buy-in for you, sir. Just the buy-in. Uh, all right. So you're gonna put in your ante your two dollars? Yes, I I chip in I chip in four dollars. Very nice. Uh, the, th the third man at the table, the goat man, he, pu he puts in his two. Joe sits there being surly and deals out the cards. Uh, for the benefit of the audience, let's just go around what we have. Duncan, what do you have? I got a pair of jacks, an ace, king, queen. I've got jack through... Shitting. Fuck. I've, got, I've got jack through ace all the same suit. Ooh, that's looking pretty good. Get, got the makings of a royal flush there. Indeed. All right. Uh, Joe's dealing and he says, okay, partner. That's not what Joe sounds. Oh. Hmm. It's your raise. And he gestures towards you, Daryl. All right. And I chuck in my last dollar. Let's see how my luck fares out this fair day. All right. Raise one. Uh, very nice, partner. Uh, the third man at the table, the goat folds. Joe. Just me and Joe. All in. How much does Joe have? Ten dollars. Well, I have literally no more money. Do you have anything to put on the table? Or do you mm. fold? I lick my lips. That's my character trait. I lick my lips. Well, I don't see here where that I'm gonna fold, so I'll put in my raffle. See on the bar, hanging up. See, can't you see? It's that fine Smith Wesson hanging up. Can't you see? You think that's a ten dollar rifle? I know that's a ten dollar rifle, my good sir. That could shoot a chicken's eye out from damn near far, far away. Fifty yards. <laughs> cool. Very nice. You put the rifle on the table. That that base. That matches. You're gonna okay. match his base. Great. Cool. Let's show what we got. 
Joe puts down his cards. Can you read them out, Duncan? What have we got? Oh, no? yeah. Read out. There's an ace of spades, an ace of clubs, an ace of diamonds, an ace of hearts, and a queen of diamonds. So that is a quadruple ace. Can you beat four aces? I don't think so. And I put down five aces. <laughs> no, I put down not a royal flush. What are your cards? I have two jacks, an ace, a king, a queen. Five aces on the table. Yeah. Joe scowls at you. Some seems to be a miss here, oh. partner. That does make sense. Uh, yeah. Yeah, some does seem to be for Sarah Levine. There's a you know, miss here, sir. And I, what, are you, what are you playing at in this bar? Oh, uh, no, I'm getting angry at him. I, was, I do say so, sir. I just joined here. Poker game, name my cards, ain't my deal. Joe stands up suddenly and points a revolver at you. What do you do? Oh, oh I fucking... Seven seconds. I smash. So... When I sat Five down, seconds. What, I, I need to know Three the seconds. I want to hit him. What do you do? with the table. You know how I made his whiskey fall over when I sat down? I wish to now do that, but strong enough so that it hits his gun arm. Nice. So you hit the table incredibly hard. It hits Joe's elbow. Joe's elbow careens up and he shoots himself in the fucking face. Oh my! And falls to the ground my dead. My dearie ma. Uh, Jack, would you like to do anything here? You've got ten seconds. I'm going to grab his gun. You're going to grab his gun? Yeah. And do what with it? I'm just gonna hold it ready, see if anyone else is gonna try and do something. Good, good call, Pete. Nice. Good call. Uh, the bar's silent. Well, I would like to, uh, I stand up. Like, don't worry, sir, nothing. Sirs, sirs, madams, and everybody in between, there's nothing here to see, nothing here to look at. Everything's fine. Joe here's just got a bit of a headache, don't you, Joe? <laughs> you are going here, you. That's black go back, go back to your business. Go back to your drinks. Nothing nice. here to see. Nothing more to look at. Uh, you, you notice that the third, the third man at the table has disappeared. Go goat man. Yeah, goat man has disappeared. You're not sure where he's gone. Is the loot still on the table? Everything's still on the table. Well, that's fine. Yeah. Right off, fine with me. Oh yeah. I scoop the loot towards me as I, I do say I believe I won that hand. So yeah, roughly how it will play out. So, it, like, uh, in the 10 seconds, you want to be very quickly going back and forth between um, the GM and the players. And they, they ask, like, oh, how hard would it be if I do this? Mm. So it'd be good if you had sort of uh, particular set questions you go through. Oh, um, how, hard would it, how hard would it be to hit the table and yeah. hurt him? And they say, oh, very easy. So you roll, and then you can achieve based on that. Yeah, I, I, I... The 10 seconds... Um, I think so long as it was always very clear how the what the, the who what where when why of the setting because obviously yeah. I had to find out from you what the table was actually like which used up some of the time um, because that was pure just some confusion on my part on how the whiskey yeah you would have to knocked. explain the the geometry of the room very well. thoroughly yes. before action took place yes Wh which you need a good gm to do which i don't think i did particularly well then <laughs> um was, so was... you need a good gm gm to set up or like having minifigs or a map or something like that could help mm. it, yeah. it, it was good i think i still think 10 seconds is actually quite a lot but yeah w with the it i guess it depends on what discussion is taking place like if i need to say how far or how high or how hard like you know how easy is it going to be that does to use up some of the 10 seconds but if it was just like what do you want to do if all those other things were reasonably clear because yeah. maybe i don't necessarily know if the player should know how hard or easy it would be because the context should kind of tell them based on their stats and their character whether it's going to be something that they could achieve which means all you really need to say is like what do you want to do and then they've got 10 seconds to just say hit the bar yeah Ideally, yeah. that's what you want to bring it down As to. As a bit of risk. Because you kind of have options. Yeah. You could have hit the bar. You could have tried to grab Joe's gun. And you have to very, the GM have to very quickly tell you how hard or easy those are. And then you have to choose yeah. at the end. See, I'm, I'm of the... Uh, I mean, this is just, just back and forth nitpicking now. The actual game, I think, worked really well. But, but I think you shouldn't know or, or be told until you've chosen an action whether it's going to be easy or hard. Because that adds an element of... A, a little bit of risk, which is good, appropriate for the setting. But also, um, all that stuff you should know contextually from the setting around you and who your character is, whether it would be a hard or a diff uh, easy action. Yeah. You know, and then all you, it's just you need to know whether it's hard or easy. And you just, they're like, okay, I want to try and grab Joe's gun. Um, I should know based on my character because I'm very strong, but very slow reflexes. That's probably going to be tough. Mm. compared to what I chose which was just hammer something yeah well I'd, I'd want 
Yeah. No, you're right. Absolutely. Yeah, but from its from a the, back to the, the the base of the game, it was fun. I enjoyed that a lot. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. just doing a, an accent, which is always an enjoyable experience for me. Yeah, for you. Not necessarily for anyone else at the table. For me, um, I liked it. I liked that you were putting pressure on us to make decisions. I think yeah, as soon as I had first play, I, I thought I'd try out something with timers because yeah, don't see that a lot in RPGs. You get that in games where you get a certain amount of time to make decisions, like path A, path B, that sort of thing. Yeah. So <laughs> I wanted to bring that in a little bit and see how it would work. Yeah. You, you do have to have it very clearly laid out with what yes. your options are. Yes. So, yeah. I think if the GM of this game, what was it called again? Sorry. The good, the bad, and the chaotic neutral. That's right. I think if the GM war laid everything out very clearly, make sure the players knew all their options, but also could know, knew enough to be able to guess how difficult it would be based on their character, the timer like is excellent and probably doesn't even need to be five, ten seconds. It could be quite a bit shorter, depending on the action. So yeah. something like Joe pulling out his gun, if he was actually going to shoot like a, a three to five second... I mean, that should be split decision, decision making. Yeah, you know? no, you're right. So the GM could just sort of arbitrarily decide. Yeah, but with that, you could even takes. not tell the player how long it's going to take. Ooh, you I know? don't think that's fair. I don't you think that would fair? be a fair thing to do, no. That's because a bit much. Especially if you're, if you're, if you're going to um, have a, a player miss out, lose a turn, or take damage as a result of them having a timer, they need to know how long it's going to take. Yeah. Actually, health was another thing because I didn't have a health oh, yes. stat in there mm. uh, because I. I don't know. Counting health and calculating health takes up time. Like D and D, you hit something with a sword, you roll D sixes to see how much it takes off. All that stuff. I thought it'd be good to have a slightly more nebulous in here. He shoots you. He shoots you in the shoulder, depending on how badly you missed or something like that. Yeah. Well, so you... it, it, have it more like a real world thing. Yeah. He shoots you in the shoulder. You're this much incapacitated, and that can affect your rolls later on. Things become more difficult. Yeah, you could go. I mean, you could go down the route we took with no holds barred. If you cast your mind back to episode one, where there was no health, but the GM had a table of kind of what an injury would, the severity of an injury and where it would be on your person would yeah. do to your stats. Yeah, and exactly. then it's just whatever happens. If you get shot in the arm, then your strength. My in my character's case, my strength would probably wane. My marksmanship would also wane because I've got a two-handed weapon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Hmm. Um, I that's I mean I've got no further questions. I I love I enjoy playing it. Mm-hmm. I enjoy Lovely. being pressured. I will miss Daryl. Rip, rip Daryl. <laughs> Daryl's ripped. He has eight strength. I think we should get into some points. We should. And, 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 and you know what that means? Points means prizes. Indeed. <laughs> And Christine. What's, what's our prize? Not Jack? sure what the prize is, but we got him. The Duncan, prize... what, what have you brought for the competitors? The prize yeah. will be a firm handshake with too much eye contact. Okay, so I'm going to do the classic go through each category individually so mm-hmm. that you can't quite work. So it's hard if you to work out the math and see who's won. So for so design, novelty, funness, those are our core measurements. For design, I've given Shootout a 7. Mm. I was originally thinking of giving it a lower score for design because almost because of its lack of design but then i was like but no but that's what makes it fun is it's and what makes it fitting of the category is it's very simple it's simplicity that level of simplicity is actually not always easy to achieve so i thought seven was a good a good score that's why they called me surprisingly simple at school <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. most, and most... If, if you look at something like paper scissors rock which the mechanic was sort of built on that that's a very prolific game or mechanic of choosing things yes so yeah clearly works if it does if everyone knows how it works so for design uh, for the good the be the, the be ad for the giad the, <laughs> the biad and the kiat <laughs> and and the spaghetti i gave it, i also gave it a seven uh, uh, for for much the same much the same uh, reason in in a sense in that um it was simple and i really enjoyed that the addition of the timers is really interesting but it is of course relying on a lot of existing rule sets and existing games to exist which i don't think should bring it down low but it's obviously not like a designed thing mm. if that makes sense but i thought it was a lot of fun i would really like to keep playing that game actually nice um i like get a story going because meeting the gang and and having the betrayal and i want to get to a point where we're, there's two people left either end of a street oh, guns yeah. drawn kind of shit i mean oh that just gives me the tingles <laughs> 
Um, so for novelty next, so novelty, how unique is the game? For Shooter, I gave it a five. It is novel in the sense that your the you put it the spaghetti western context is is novel, but it is paper scissors rock. Um, Advanced paper scissors it is, rock. It's baby's next paper scissors rock. I'd love to see Which, a bunch of babies play that game. <laughs> I don't think that should be something that that gives it like a very low score. Mm, mm. But it, I mean, it is a, a, it is basically just reskinned Paper Scissors Rock with a LARP element, um, <laughs> which we forced upon you. Um, for for novelty, for good, the bad, and the chaotic neutral, I gave it a seven. Mm-hmm. I gave it a seven. Nice. I think Born seven's ahead. a Born really ahead. good middle ground, good score. Um, and I thought it was a really. I just I loved the timer. I would love to see even harsher timers, and I, I, I really, I love games that make me sweat and feel anxious because then I'm like invested in the game. You know, yeah. When you're feeling that kind of emotion, you know you're invested. Mm. As you get better at the game, and as your GM gets better at explaining things, you could also bring the timer down. You could. So could you miss- start at fifteen, and then after you played three sessions, you all make a very quick decision. So down and down and down and compress yeah. it. Yeah. Mm. Funness. How fucking thin was the game, guys? Well, I tell you what, they they were both a lot of fun. Um, I gave, I, I'm throwing down so many seven states. Very unoriginal score. <laughs> I've given Shootout a seven yeah. because I think it was incredibly fun and quick to learn, and I thought that was great. But I don't know how long you could necessarily like. I don't know how much you would want to play it because yeah. of the simplicity of it, which isn't so much a letdown, but it's still a game without longevity is always a risk, um, financially speaking. Um, for good, bad, chaotic, neutral, funness, I gave it a nine. Ooh. I gave it big old Ooh. points. I nice. gave it big old, big old points. <laughs> what? What were nice. you? What? I don't know what I was gonna say. You had nothing, did you? I, I thought I had something and it slipped away. Yeah, I give it a nine. I don't. Yeah. I don't even think I really need to explain it more. The, the 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 fact that you're making players feel emotions like anxiety and emotions like stress, while it doesn't sound fun when I say it like that. <laughs> That means they're invested, and if someone's invested in their character enough to feel stressed, mm. you've won as a GM and as a game maker, which is perfect. Yeah, and there'd be scenarios where you're meant to feel stressed. You've got a exactly. gun pointed at you. Yeah, and make especially, a decision. especially when you have to make multiple rapid decisions, and mm. you don't you don't have enough time to think about if it's going to work. You just have to act. Yeah. that's like escaping the mind. You're on the mind cart going through the on the you know the rails, and you've yeah. got to keep, make all these decisions. You don't know if these are the right turns because you can't strategize. You just must act. Hmm. That's awesome. Nice. Speed of play. That was our category. Speed of play. Well, I think we can tell whose game was faster. <laughs> that. We ran out of things to talk about, Jack, with your game within the first 10 seconds. Yep. I gave you a solid big old 10 out of 10. Yes. Yeah, yeah that agreed. Was, that was yes. a Real fast quick. game. The two markers for speed of play were how fast is it to learn and or how fast is it to play. It was both mm-hmm. by a Absolutely. mile yeah. even when we added more rules it was still super quick <laughs> we just had to pad it out to get a show quick jack they call me around quick the jack. boroughs <laughs> that's what my wife calls Speed me anyway jack. not quick really jack. sure why um i gave seven for good bad chaotic neutral because it was still very fast but there is some setup involved yes and there still would be slower elements in terms of like the stories, story bits, and all the typical role playing elements, yeah. sort of bring story the and explaining. Yes, there'd be there'd be very fast moments, but the rest would be it was very the usual kind of pace. Yes, you had the spaghetti western um, spaghetti. You yeah, you had the spaghetti. You had the spaghetti western elements of a long drawn out bit followed by done. Yeah, which is appropriate for the setting, which brings us to the setting, the bonus ah. points. Bonus points. So the bonus question, memes. The question is, who is getting bonus big old bonus points? So as this is a new thing in our in our show, I'll very quickly explain what we're doing here. There are three bonus points up for grabs for for each of you six total. A one, you get a, a three if you've adhered to the theme in every sort of oozing little ounce of your your game. A two sort of for the middle, one if it's only slightly, and zero if you haven't bothered. One one for participation, and then... Yeah, it's a participation trophy, yeah. yeah. Two's like your most improved player. We're all millennials, so we have to have participation <laughs> points. <laughs> so, uh, for shootout, yes. or lasso, live action shootout. Oh, I like lasso. I, I, gave you a, I gave you a three. <gasps> I gave you the hey! full points. I'd like to thank the Academy. Because your game, 
like everything about it was was spaghetti western it was the, it was a shootout it was fast it has the looking at people's eyes and suddenly like draw drawing your weapon mm-hmm. that is spaghetti mm. that is spaghetti um aj gave you a two oh i actually okay. originally i originally gave it's you hard to compete with root toot and shoot over there yes so. I originally gave you a one, and then as I was thinking about it whilst we were talking, I was like, actually, no, you do. You've got a lot of the th- the themes of western in that the long drawn out bits, followed by the action and the ability to 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 put all those different elements in the tropes. Hmm. I was like, hell yeah, no, that's a two. However, that means you tie at thirty two each. Oh no! Oh. So there is no clear winner. Everybody wins. Someone, someone. R- There's yeah. nothing wrong with the tie. Fade up that end music, AJ, because this is the end of the episode. That is it for this episode. Thank you all for joining us. I hope you have enjoyed yourself as much as we have. If you've liked listening to this cavalcade of incompetent RPG development, do head on over to our socials and give us a like and a subscribe or whatever it is else that uh, people expect at the end of podcasts these days. Uh, And make sure you tune in for the next episode, which features everybody's favourite futuristic genre, cyberpunk. I'll see you there.